HD Smartcast. You are listening to a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Why Not Mint Money. I am Shipra from Mint's personal finance team. In today's episode, I will tell you how tax on rent on multiple house properties is determined, and how you can reduce the tax outgo. Rent earned from a real estate property, which includes both residential and commercial properties, is added to the total income and tax at your tax slab. Now, you may think that tax is to be paid on the rent that you actually earn from a let-out property, but that's not true. Income tax laws require you to pay tax even on vacant properties. Now, why is that, and how is tax on such properties determined, is what we will discuss in today's episode. I have Nitesh Budadev, who is a chartered accountant and founder of Nimit Consultancy, as the expert speaker today. Hi, welcome to Why Not Mint Money, a personal finance podcast where we help you understand basic money concepts and share strategies for you to build your wealth. So let's get started on your money journey. Hi, Nitesh, and welcome to Why Not Mint Money. Thank you, Shipra. Thanks for having me here. and it's a very crucial topic and so uh, to understand about the notional rent shipra i think we should first discuss about the what kind of uh, uh, classification of properties are there when it comes to income tax right. so uh, the first one is a self occupied one uh, self occupied as we understand uh, where we use for our own residential purpose okay the other one is the let out which we normally let's say we took for the investments we given for a, we gave someone to stay in and we are taking rent out of that which is a rent out property or you call it a let out and then comes the deem let out one okay which is uh, a bit different uh, we understand the other two which we discussed self occupied and let out so now what is deem let out to understand the notional rent i'm discussing about the deem let out uh, the deem let out for the income tax purpose is so if you own more than two houses and uh that the third house if you let's say you have a three house so that three third house for the income tax purpose it's a deem let out and whatever income you have to show uh from that property can be considered as a notional rent shipra right so let us one by one also understand you know how each of these properties is classified as i mean let out properties uh, you know uh, it's easy to understand you let out a property on it right? uh, what is a self occupied property and how is a property determined to be deemed to be let out what is the difference what are the criteria that one needs to meet uh, you know for both these classifications right so a uh, self occupied again it's it's uh, very easy to understand because normally let's say we own a house and we are staying in and we are using it for an, our own purpose it's a self occupied one but i would like to give a small example to make it uh, more clear though self occupied we understood in that sense uh, that's true but when someone owns let's say three houses okay and the one uh, is using all the three houses for uh, staying in let's say uh, in one one of the houses uh, he stays in other house uh, his parents are staying in the third house uh, his children are staying in okay now he believes that shipra all the three properties are self occupied because uh, he is using for either for himself or his relative or uh, his children and parents for staying in and that's why it's all can be termed as a self occupied one so here comes uh, the tax law uh, it allows you can show maximum two properties only as a self occupied one though you are using all the three i understand you haven't given it on the uh, rent but out of three only two will be allowed to show as self occupied the other you have to offer as a deem let out though it's not let out either your children or uh, uh, parents staying in but still it would be considered as a deem let out so this is uh, something a very interesting one should know about right so if somebody has uh, you know in a year for half of the year they've occupied it themselves and the, for the other half say it was vacant or it was let out in that case will it be classified as self occupied or as deemed to be let out yeah so it's still considered as a uh, let out and again again uh, as as we are discussing the tax laws are not <laughs> that simple which we normally understand in the common parlance 
and so earlier it was only one property was allowed as a self occupied but since 1920 financial year uh, if you want more than uh, two then the uh, third one you have to offer uh, as a deemed uh, let out right right understood so coming to deemed let out properties um again uh, are there any additional criteria like one needs to you know not stay in the same city or some of those criteria which uh, you know which make it a deemed to be let out property no so even if you, let's say you have own three houses in any of the town or you own uh, in different parts of the town so income tax says that if let's say you have all the three properties in your own name so you own three properties anywhere in the india okay it can be as we discuss in the same town or it can be in the different town okay but if you own more than two then the third you has to offer as a uh, deem let out so if you offer if you have four and let's say out of four all four you are using let's say one is holiday home or one is just vacant it's it, it doesn't make any difference to income tax so aapke naam pe agar more than two properties hai that's it the third one has to be uh, deem let out simple as that right okay okay so that's about classification now coming back to notional rent how can a taxpayer determine the notional rent true it's very crucial because see uh, right now we are discussing that uh, even though i am uh, using that property and i want let out and so how can i offer the deem let out because i don't know about uh, what is the rent of that and then comes the income tax provision uh, to determine how you can uh, show this as a notional rent and what would be that notional rent okay so to understand the notional rent we need to understand a few of the terminology which used for income from house property the first one is gross annual value now what is this gross annual value gross annual value means rent received or receivable or reasonable expected rent whichever is higher of these two but i understand we are talking about notional rent so there is no question of rent received or receivable right so what is this reasonable expected rent now this reasonable expected rent is higher of either a fair market value municipal valuation or rent as per the rent control act so whichever is higher of this three i have to show this as a notional rent and i have to offer tax on this shipra so uh, this is how the income tax is providing how you can calculate about the uh, deem let out so if it would have been the let out then the rent received would have been there but in our case we have to go with the reasonable expected rent and this would be the formula to calculate uh, reasonable expected rent and that's the notional rent right and how how is one uh, supposed to get the municipal rent value and the fair rent value standard rent i assume is uh, given by the rent control act so it is uh, you know it's a fixed amount but what about fair rent and municipal rent so municipal uh, valuation is available uh, from the uh, government offices and the fair market value is determined based on what are the uh, uh, existing valuation going in that particular area okay but this is uh, uh, quite uh, flexibly available uh, with the department so one has to get from that i i know it's not that easy that available some somewhere in online uh, but uh, one has to do that due diligence to get that uh, municipal valuation in that case right right and do all these three value need to be declared in the itr or no one has to do the you know one has to determine the value at their end and then the value determined is to be put in itr how is it done right so out of out of these three whichever is higher that you have to uh, calculate and whichever you have to select and that you have to offer as a uh, gross annual value so gross annual value will show that higher of this three so you just need to put the which one is the higher but if it income tax department has any other say that whatever you offered is not the higher of this three then they can have a scrutiny and they can they ask that this is not the actual valuation uh, you have offered oh right right okay so now coming to the taxation part um are there any tax breaks which are available on rent income yes so either it can be a deemed a let out in our case which we are discussing or it can be a let out so the first deduction you can get is the property tax paid normally we call it a municipal tax or a property tax that is uh, deductible uh, shipra one needs to understand here is that it should be actually a paid okay 
so many a times it happened that now uh, during that uh, financial year if we don't pay the tax we can't get the deduction of this so this is the property tax paid you can uh, deduct from the rent the other deduction called a standard deduction which is 30% of the net annual value now we discuss about the gross annual value so gross annual value uh, as we discuss minus the property tax paid now whatever amount comes it's called net annual value and this net annual value ka 30% is a standard deduction so sometimes we believe that oh i have incurred some expenses for this let out or deem let out property can i take this as a tax break no because you are getting a standard deduction of 30% of net annual value and that's uh, you can take and show as a deduction so your gross annual value uh, 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 less uh, property tax and then comes the net annual value and that's 30% of uh, net annual value is the deduction so now whatever is the income that's your uh, income from the house property after this uh, one which we all are aware that many people take loan to buy this property it can either be a self occupied or a deem let out or a let out so one can deduct the 2 lakh rupees of interest up to 2 lakh rupees of interest see we understand shipra there are two element to a loan in emi a principal payment and a interest so the interest element one can take up to 2 lakh rupees if it's a self occupied but if it's a uh, 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 deem let out still it's 2 lakh but if it's a proper let out property then there is a unlimited interest deduction allowed so it's not uh, limited to 2 lakh rupees right and the principal loan repayment uh, as we all know it's deducted from atc that part of that 1.5 lakh rupees limit yes yes nitesh why is there a distinction in how much interest you can deduct on a self occupied and a deemed to be let out property versus a let out property uh, and yeah, so interest, in the interest uh, tax benefit yeah so see uh, if if we understand that when we uh, if you ask me logically even if i have also this question that if somebody is saying it's deem let out then why it's only limited to 2 lakh rupees okay because i am offering a i am offering a rent on that but normally when you understand deem let out you are not uh, actually uh, charging the rent as normally charge if you would have let out because see always the rent received or receivable would be higher if you compare the reasonable expected rent and the rent received thing and i think that is why uh, tax is determining that so it's if you are properly let out property then only you can because see that could be termed as a commercial activity okay because i am buying that property for the investment and i am actually letting it out and that's why i am getting uh, more benefit in that that's what i think that's the logic when income tax is coming out with this provision right okay okay so that's about tax breaks now um is there a way to uh, optimize tax on rent from multiple properties yes so uh, first uh, tax planning or a tax hack i would say that let's say you own a three property and as we discussed you can't show all three if you are using all three as uh, uh, for your residence or let's say even uh, one of them is lying vacant and you have to offer this as a uh, deem let out so now ideally one should offer the one as a deem let out because it's your choice right which one you want to offer as a deem let out so either it's in the small town where the rent income is less or out of the three whichever offer a less uh, notional rent or a nest or uh, uh, whatever uh, income we are arriving it's a least in the one we should offer this as a uh, deem let out so your tax payable on that uh, notional thing would be less that's the first thing now coming to uh, what are the other tax planning could be done in this case so let's go by one by one uh, let's first talk about the self occupied property so see there is no income in self occupied property there is no rent of course and so there is no question of municipality tax deduction or uh, property tax deduction and there is no question of deducting a 30% standard deduction so is there any other thing available yes and we all commonly know this interest income a uh, interest expense we pay uh, on the housing loan so uh, always in case of self occupied property and when uh, he is having a housing loan there will always be a loss from self occupied property which will be up to 2 lakh rupees so this loss can be set off against any income okay i am saying against any income so it can be a salary it can be a capital gain or anything else so we all normally call it that your interest uh, you get as a deduction so this section 24 is deals it's dealing with the housing loan uh, 
uh, interest and this is allowed here uh, as a deduction this is about the self occupied property shipra uh, let's go to uh, deemed let out in that case also uh, there is a possibility of a loss let's say that property is taken on a loan and whatever interest portion we are paying to uh, uh, to uh, wet whenever we bought we have taken a loan for that and we are paying interest on that so now there is a possibility that there is a loss and this loss also uh, you can show this as income from uh, house property or loss from house property coming to uh, uh, deemed uh, coming to let out property let me give you a small example here let's say from a let out property there is a income of 9 lakh rupees okay we are just assuming there is a, a, a property we have given on rent and there is an income of 9 lakh and let's say we'll deduct a uh, uh, standard deduction from that which is uh, 2.7 uh, uh, lakh rupees and there is a in uh, expense element which is your uh, house uh, that property ke liye jo humne loan liya hai usko deduct kar rahe which is also in the range of uh, 6 lakh rupees okay so now in this scenario because of all this expense 6 lakh rupees of uh, interest and whatever uh, standard deduction we got and due to that we are coming to a loss situation now this loss can be more than 2 lakh rupees it is allowed as we discussed because it is a let out property now this loss can internally set off between any other house property we have uh, let out or it can be a deemed let out uske samne we can adjust this uh, loss completely it can be more than 2 lakh so income from house properties can have more than 2 lakh rupees of loss internally and we can deduct this but the total loss after adjusting internally between the house property could not be more than 2 lakh rupees that we need to see and now that 2 lakh rupees as we were discussing can be set off against any other income and now so what are the benefit if i can't uh, set off and against any other income if i have a more loss uh, than 2 lakh rupees right internally of course it can be adjusted but if you have a more loss than 2 lakh rupees you can always carry forward for next eight assessment years and in next year you can set it off against any of the house property income so this is something uh, very uh, crucial to know about when it comes to a uh, tax planning or understanding how the loss can be benefited uh, in case of house property income and one more thing shipra yeah. uh, sometimes of course we recommend that one should file return always but uh, one element to remember here this loss of house property can even be carried forward if one is not file the return on the due date or not filing at all so that's something to uh, highlight here Wow, that's that's a very useful uh, tip about you know loss from income, uh, loss from uh, income from property. Um, all right, okay. So that brings us to the end of today's episode. Uh, thanks a lot, Nitesh, for joining us today. Thank you. That brings us to the end of today's episode. If you would like to know more about this topic or make a suggestion of a personal finance topic that you would like us to cover, I can be reached at Twitter under the username of. Shipra Singh Sorot and on LinkedIn at Shipra Singh. Thank you for tuning in. See you in the next episode. This was a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. HD Smartcast.